Hey everyone, Port SM, welcome to another inbox review. Now, a while back, I asked my patrons were there any reviews I'd like to see. That's part of the tier system on there, you get to request reviews. And um, Philip Harford very kindly suggested this one. Um, it's a kit I've wanted to build for a while, put it off because I've had a few dodgy things about it, but it's come to the point where if I don't build it, I never will. So I'm going to build it, and here we are. So this is Ravel's 124 BMW 850i. This is also reboxed by Tamiya. And sold under the Tamiya guys. Um, and we'll chat about the kit a little bit in a minute when we get into the review. Car I always wanted, never ever got, unfortunately. Again, we'll chat with that in a minute. Uh, but at least I can try and build a Model 1 of it. I'm going to do it in the Calypso Red, shown on the box. I've got the gravity paints for it as well. Uh, and we might change out the wheels to some different rims because I'm not too keen on the kit ones. But I'm not sure which ones just yet. So there we are. So let's jump straight into the review. I have a rummage through the box. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, we are on my camera mic today. Apologies all round, but my uh, Mac is uploading the video, so I can't use it to record any sound. So hopefully the sound is good. If not, well, I don't know what we're gonna do. Hopefully it should be good. Um, this is Ravel's premium BMW A50i. Tamiya also boxed this under their own name. Tamiya actually reboxed a Ravel kit. Now, I was told these are originally Maisto metal kits that have been converted into plastic kits. Whether that's true, I don't know. But I was told because of that, there's a bit of a trade-off in some of the part quality and the fitment. Now, I have cut some parts off the sprues, many of the bonnet and the boot, or trunk and hood, whatever you want to call them, and all the bumper components, just to see the fit. And so far, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So hopefully, we can get through this. Calypso Red, I've got the colour for it. Gravity specially made for me ages ago. So this is going to be a very pretty colour on a very, very pretty car. I always wanted one of these. These are truly iconic BMWs. This is the A50 V12. I believe this, the A40 V8 is the better driver's car. This is more of a cruiser. Always wanted one. Never got one. I had to settle with a 740i. Silky smooth BMW V8 uh, with plenty of poke and uh, just luxury, luxury cruising uh, machines. And yeah, always wanted one of these, never got one, but hey, I've got this one. I paid £80 for this kit. It's an expensive kit. It's getting harder and harder to find. The Tamiya boxing is exactly the same boxing, I believe, uh, just under the Tamiya name. But like I say, I believe it's a bit of a tricky kit to build. It is what it is. Anyway, enough waffle. Beautiful picture of the car on the bonnet. On the bonnet? On the front of the box. I'll be keeping the sticker on my wall. We've got some nice, sleek picture of the side profile of the rear car as well. Beautiful car. Absolutely stunning. Bit of info about the car there as well. Should you wish to read it, you can pause that and have a little read. And on the other side, a picture of the engine. I'm assuming that's a real V12. Seen the engine built up in the kit and it looked great as well. And there's the colours that Ravel are recommending for use. Like I say, the kit's brand spanking new. I've just taken a few parts off today to try fitment to see what it was like. So, bags are open. I've done this today. Uh, I do have a film, so when we do the review, you can see me cutting the part, uh, the build, you can see me cutting parts off. So, we've got instructions, they can go over there. We've got all the uh, chassis, running gear, engine, and what have you. Clear parts, which are, eh, we'll get to them in a bit. Got this sprue that had all the body panels on, chrome parts, which we probably use many of, the wheels I hope to change. Uh, we've got decals in there. We've got all the interior here as well, which we'll get to in a little bit. We're a very old Ravel pamphlet. You don't get pamphlets anymore, do you? Look, pamphlet. What a strange word that is as well. Ravel's pamphlet with their airbrush colour system and their Plastic airbrush with propellant can. You know, I start off one of those. Great stuff. And then we got all our engine components as well. So there's quite a bit in here. I guess it kind of looks a bit like a Fujimi Enthusiast kit. Maybe not as in detail, but there's plenty in there. And then we have the body with panels and tyres. So I'm going to get all the panels out. And this nice little cutout that holds the body with a down top view 
of the uh, the BMW itself. So excuse me for knocking the camera. So like I say, we cut these out to sprue. This has come off this sprue, not the chrome. I just came over for a look by itself. So we'll look at this in a minute. But what I wanted to test was the fit of the bonnet hood, whatever you want to call it, which is very, very good. Can't fault that at all. That goes together really well. The boot lid, there was a little bit of um, flash on there. I had to clean up. But overall, again, really good fit. Not too bad at all. Now, where it gets trickier is these front and rear bumpers. And by the look of it, they're going to have to, at least the fronts are going to have to stay off. Now, they do line up, but there's not much holding them in place. So, if you line it up properly, like so... It doesn't line up too bad. So I'm considering keeping them separate. And once everything's polished up, pop them in place, hold them, a couple of dabs of CA glue inside, done. Rather than trying to struggle with plastic glue and getting it through fingers, I think that's probably the way to go. Keep them all off. Because uh, I don't want to glue them in place and I'm finally to take them off to get the chassis in place and what have you. Um, so that can stay off. Uh, and the front bumper, uh, which obviously forms part of the front of the bonnet is a little bit of a better fit as you can see I'll show all this in the build because this is my this is my next build that's not a bad fit at all and then there's a lower lip that fits underneath if I take that off like so it's quite a nice positive fit that can all be glued together that's no problem those all color coded and there's a little black piece that fits underneath so so far the body it doesn't look too bad, to be fair. So I had to do this just to check and see if it fitted. Uh, I have heard nightmare stories about it. If you've built the kit, please let me know. Please let me know what problems you came across and what have you and how you fixed them. On this sprue, I'm going to zoom in a touch. Uh, we've got the wing mirrors. I do have some M3 mirrors from Scale Production. Maybe we'll replace them. They look a bit tacky. I think it does a little bit because people did it all the time. Uh, they'll be for the uh, boot lid. The trunk, there's that lower splitter for the front, and a few other parts there as well. And our pop-up headlights, which are also going to need painting in body colour as well. So they're all the main body components uh, there, all in one place. We've got a chrome sprue with these nasty wheels. I do not like these at all. I've got some wheels um, in mind, so maybe we'll add those later. So wheel-wise, I've got these uh, Fujimi, I believe they are, the Aoshima, I think they might be Aoshima, 18-inch uh, BBS LMs, I think they'll look better. Very kindly given to me by uh, Mr. Gary uh, Ride the Wind, and uh, I think they'll look a lot better. If I offer it up to the body, I think they'll look alright. If not, it's Alpina rims from Scale Production, so I kind of like the Alpina wheels, I'm very partial to Alpina wheels. On a BMW because, well, they were always the wheel I wanted, so maybe we'll put them on. I don't know, we'll see. But other than that, we've got the kidney grills, we've got mirrors, rear light clusters. So not a lot on the chrome we'll use because, like I said, I don't really want to use those wheels. But we'll see what happens with the wheels. I change my mind like the wind, so we'll see what happens. Eh? Uh, engine parts, probably one of the biggest bags I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you could camp in this, like so. So we've got some interior parts. So we've got a steering wheel, which doesn't look too bad. I'm going to zoom a little bit more. We've got a... Oh, ah, okay, it's the under panel of the bonnet. Ah, okay, that's what that is. Got some intakes, with the MAF sensors will be there. Uh, we've got the radiators, fans, brakes. Brake discs are pretty nasty. Anti-roll bars. Strut bars, A bars, the interior of the boot as well. Nice little touch. I'm going to zoom out because it's a massive sprue, that one, isn't it? Huge. Uh, we've got lots of parts there. So it's not a very simple kit at all. We've got all the tape deck. Oh, what have you? My 740 had a tape deck in it still, I think, if I remember right. And uh, yeah, all the climate controls on there on the BMWs and what have you. Uh, the dashboard handbrake lever so quite a nice engine to be honest i've seen it built up it looked really really good it does show the v8 engine power plant really well sorry v12 on this one my bad 
Uh, we've got suspension parts, the prop shaft, drive shaft, whatever you want to call it, and the strange hinge arrangement for the bonnet hood as well. So again, no problems there. A little bit flashy. Some of the parts are a little bit soft, but literally with this, it is what it is. There's, there's not much we can do about this. It's an all kit, um, which hails from 1990, according to instructions. So that is, quick maths, 32 years old. So it's knocking on a bit, isn't it? It really is knocking on quite a bit. Uh, but I'll make the best of it. You know, I've got a passion for this car. I've always wanted one, love them. And uh, we can uh, see what we can do. We can bring it back from what it is. And while you're there, if you're not a subscriber of M539 Restorations on YouTube, go and follow Shretton. He takes all this era BMW, 7s, 8s, 3s. Uh, he loves E39 uh, 5 Series, M5 and brings them all back to life and it's a wonderful channel, wonderful guy and literally my favourite YouTuber so go on there and have a look interior, we've got door cards, we've got the seats iconic BMW seats with the seat belts moulded in again the details are a bit soft for me the iconic colour interior for these 80s BMWs is grey grey leather um, it's just perfect for the car and I think that's more than likely the colour I'll go we've got the rear seats as well two separate seats with the console in the center dashboard is there like i say it's a little bit soft um but we'll make of it as we can we're molding a weird color plastic it's almost like they're trying to mimic that gray leather um but we'll certainly do the best we can with it and uh, hopefully make uh, a nice enough looking interior uh we've then got last two screws we've got this part as well which is something that fell off i'm gonna pretend i know what that is that's a hujima watcher part of the uh interior uptake flange engine parts we've got all sorts of stuff here including a nice loose part we'll put the loose parts there so we don't lose them or loose them <laughs> hey see what i did there bit of a joke mm, banter uh we've got some intakes we've got these cylinder heads uh, washer bottle, uh, bottles, intakes, exhausts, all sorts of stuff here. I'm not going to pretend to know what it is, but it all looks very technical and very interesting. So, moulding's not too bad. A little bit of flash, it's a little bit soft again in areas. But like I say, it is what it is with this, there's not much we can do really. We'll do the best depiction we can of the engine and the kit. And uh, whatever the outcome is, the outcome of this is the thing with all the kits, it is what it is. Now, the size of this chassis is the reason we can't put the bumpers on because it's all going to get in the way. So, as you can see there, look, we're going to have to leave the front, the back one may be able to go in place, but I think we'll play it safe and follow the instructions and not put it on because it is a massive chassis. We've got drive shafts. Obviously rear wheel drive, we've got the big exhaust sciences there as well. Which is not too bad. No real detail on the inside. We've got uh, turret tops for the suspension on the front here. Underneath, oh, we've got some brake lines and what have you. Running along the back, so they're not too bad. Got a bit of a wash in there, highlight those. Uh, the sciences look good, they've got good texture on them as well. So hopefully they'll look good. And then we've got all sorts of stuff for gearboxes, differentials, uh, air frames for the underneath, the exhaust system itself. So there is quite a bit on there. I'm going to zoom out so hopefully get it all in shot. So quite a bit on there. It's not quite a few GM enthusiasts here, but there's certainly enough to keep us going. Like I say, it's just it's showing its age. It really is. The exhaust getting any drilling out because they're not hollow. They're filled. Um, but like I say, all we can do is make the best of it that we can. So decals are in here. Decals are on this weird backing paper. They kind of look like they've yellow, but I don't actually think they have. Lots of license plates, number plates there, as you can see. We'll be going with the BMW A50 ones more than likely. I think these I get a quick spray over with uh, microscale decal, uh, what's it called? Decal film, just to make sure they're okay, because obviously I want the BMW logos on the wheels, uh, and the A50i one's quite important for the back, and the bonnet, and the boot lid as well. We've got lots of decals for inside the engine bay, speedos and what have you. So hopefully they'll be all right. Revel decals are normally pretty reliable, but I think we'll quick, definitely keep these a quick go over with some of the micro scale decal film. And as you can see, there's our center console there with the iconic 
red display on the uh, climate control. Which reminds me of my old car, absolutely brilliant. In here we've got, uh, um, I don't know, you're probably signing your life away for something. Revel kit is made of polystyrene, it's three and a half for coat components, where if you touch it, it'll kill you. Oh, fair play. Quite an honest upfront uh, agreement, isn't it? I don't agree to that. And uh, as you can see, the years of the decals have left their imprint on this paper. But you can see that it's been absorbing stuff, so hopefully it's been doing its job and they are alright. And the instructions are... Uh, pretty depressing to be honest i'm not gonna lie they are uh very depressing so we've got achtung uh vor dem zoom oh it's german sorry attention carefully read instruction sheet for assembling blah 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 so it's basically you know don't go rinsing your hands in acid you know gargling the plastic part it's, it's just stupid common sense things you don't need to be told and they've got all the legends here for glue don't glue number of working steps Optional, uh, decal, uh, shown assembled, clear parts, chrome is a triangle, don't iron that will you, whatever that means. And then the colours, how to get the metallic red and all the colours required in Ravel stupid colour callouts, which are different callouts for every single kit, so you've got to refer back to this chart every single time. We start assembly with the engine, which is where we will not start, because we never ever do. Um, we will start with the body and I come back to this. This will be part two of the video, but it looks to be a fairly, you know, detailed engine to be fair. So I'm hoping it's going to look well. Um, it looks good in pictures I've seen. Uh, like I say, you are going to see it under the bonnet. So quite a prominent piece and a very, uh, well, certainly a prominent engine. Big old beastie, big five litre V12. Uh, and then we're onto our running gear, suspension. Uh, the exhausts and so on um, so there's quite a bit in there to do it's going to keep you busy for a while and then onto our interior getting the wheels in place so how do these wheels attach because we're going to have to change this for our wheels okay they are studded there so we're going to have to change that for our wheels so we'll weigh that up at the time how we're going to do that we'll, we'll bodge that together when we get to it best thing to say uh, interior in, all the centre consoles in, all the different buttons and what have you. Uh, that's the upper part of the dash with the instrument binnacle. Got you. Accelerator pedals, steering column. Ah, that's what they were. Okay, steering column. Seating, dashing, uh, headresting. And so on. Oh, okay. Ah, I got how that works. I see now. I see. Uh, getting the seating, door cards in place. The glass. We didn't look at the glass. Where's the glass? There it is. See, I know you forgot something then. I know you lot were shouting at me to look at the glass, so that's fair, fair enough. The glass there, the interior mirror, getting the interior in, uh, the hinges for the boot lid, putting the boot lid in as well, just clicks in place there by the look of it. And then we've got all the inner boot lid, so we can flock that, that'll look good, as well as the interior. And then all the rear lights, rear bumper. So again, I think we will keep all this off because you can see there, it's all off and it's telling us to put it on afterwards. And then the front, we can assemble all the sub-assemblies and then hopefully carefully glue it in place and not ruin everything. That is the plan. Whether that works out like that is a completely different story because nobody knows, do they? Um, and then onto the pop-up headlights, which actually do move by the look of it. They clip in place and will go up and down, not by themselves, obviously. Uh, but with your manipulation, they will. And then finish off the engine base. So we've got our washer bottles, uh, covers, the window wipers. We've got the bonnage hinge pins. Hin hinge? Hinge pinch. Uh, hinge pins there as well, which are being melted by a hot screwdriver, which looks painful. Looks a bit kinky, that, to be honest. But anyway, that's by the by. Rubber floats your boat, wherever you're into. Uh, we've got nipple clamps. Sorry, not nipple clamps. Thinking of something else. Uh, we've got the bonnet pins. Uh, hinges go in there as well. They just click in place there. No glue. Do not glue, whatever you do. Uh, covers there as well. They'll be for like the fuse boxes and what have you. Uh, and then the wing mirrors. So probably we'll go with the uh, kit wing mirrors because they are part of the car, obviously. Door handles and what have you. And the south profiles with the decals as well. So obviously some are optional, some you can change. But the BMW logos, front, rear, wheels and the A50 badge on the back are all part of this. And that's our instructions and our kit. Aha, you thought I'd gotten them, didn't you? I actually did, and I forgot them come back and do these. So here we go. Here's the clear parts. Now, I've looked at these. They're not the best. They're a little bit ropey. 
I've seen worse, I've seen better, so they're not the end of the world, but they've definitely got a lot of distortion in them, uh, as you can see there on the instructions on the bench, they're not nice, even close up, there is massive distortion, but again, it is what it is, unless we're going to sit and replace it all, which is doable, but a lot more faff than needed, they are usable parts, and uh, we're going to use them, but there's a lot of distortion, there's a lot of wavy lines for the clear parts, you could probably see it by angle here. Uh, we've also got the rear light lenses, front light lenses, sides, uh, the markers at the bottom, um, or what have you, but it is what it is with the clear parts that we are stuck with them. Um, I've certainly seen worse, but I've seen massively better as well. It's just one of those things, unfortunately. So there we are. So there we go. That is definitely the end of the review. Goodbye. Okay, there we go then. So like I say, it's a 32-year-old kit. It's definitely showing its age. I'm glad I took off those body panels to check the fit. It seems okay. So hopefully it'll go okay. Whether it will, don't know. We're not going to find out until we build it. But we'll persevere and hopefully come out with a nice looking model at the end of it. Um, whether it's true about being the Maisto kit, I don't know. It would make sense because Revell does do a Maisto model of this. Um, I don't know. But the body panels seem to fit together okay. As I said, the detail's soft. It's a 32 year old kit. Um, the glass isn't good, but we'll make the best of it that we can. That's all we can ever do, and so we'll do all this. It's not a cheap kit, this. I paid £80 for this thing a while back. Uh, and it was a kit the late Gary Pashley always spoke about. He'd like to see built. Um, so I'm going to build it for him as well, I suppose. That and the Tammy, like, Tammy Alexis LFA were two kits he quite often mentioned to me. Uh, so we'll build this in Gary's honour as well, I think. But it looks a good kit. Uh, like I say, all we can do is try our best and see what becomes of it. Um, so there we go. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a Patreon me, a PayPal me, and a Buy Me Coffee link in the description down below. Patrons get two week early access on all videos, uh, and you get two exclusive weekly uh, live streams, and occasionally get a option to pick reviews or builds you'd like to see, uh, or techniques, and obviously all the questions in the world you can ask me as well are all there on the Patreon. Uh, and obviously, if you want to make a one-time donation, there's a PayPal me and a buy me a coffee as well. I know that keeps all these videos going and the live streams and helps me keep in doing what I'm able to do here, which is providing videos for all you wonderful people out there in our community. So there we are. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification, um, give a thumbs up as well, and leave a comment. Always interesting to read comments. If you built this kit, please let me know. Were there any problems? Where were they? What did you do to fix them? And if you have built it, there's no problems, but hey, let me know as well. I'm interested for any feedback. So I forget it's the Revel Kit and the Tamiya Boxing as well. Either of those will do. And there we are. Uh, loads of links down below for all my social media, the merchandise page, t-shirts are there. Well, there will be. Um, and all my Paul ISM modeling page, UMP, ISM, uh, my affiliate store, all the products used in my videos, and my link to uh, my scale mates as well. So you can see the rest of my stash. And there we are, another inbox review. There's a very special inbox review coming in the next couple of days. It's going to be a long one, but it's a very good one. So stand by for that one. And uh, hopefully we can get that one on the go as well. It's an exciting project that I am very happy and excited to get. So we'll see about that one. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Please leave a comment. Take care. Bye-bye.